Hello again, it's good to be back with you. I did a video a day or two ago about why thermodynamics makes students crazy. And it seems to be going over pretty well, so I thought I'd go a little further down that path. Today I want to talk about the Carnot heat engine, which sounds really abstract. Well, it, it, not as much as you'd think. So I want to talk about why we think Har Carnot heat engines are good, what we do with them, and why that is a good way to think about an engine. All right, now, if you're like me, when you think about an engine, you may be thinking about something like this. Okay, that, my friends, is an engine. That's 10,000 horsepower, 7.5 megawatts. That's a supercharger, nitromethane, fire shooting out of the headers. That is an engine, okay? 44 amps just to run the spark plugs. All right, that's an engine. Cylinders, pistons, crankshafts, blowers, root blower, belts all over the place, that's an engine. Why is that an engine? Well, here's the problem. If you think of everything in terms of the actual hardware, like that dragster engine or like an airplane engine or a motorcycle engine, you get caught up in the details. You start having to think too much about connecting rods and crankshafts and wrist pins and intake systems and all that other stuff that make a real engine. And what sometimes happens when you start thinking about all those details is you lose the big idea. Well, here's the big idea, and it's deceptively simple to look at. When you think about what an engine is really doing, there's a, several ways to think about it. A Carnot heat engine is one of them. You take, you make heat somehow. Okay? Well, heat is energy. Well, the, the heat we're talking about is the combustion of fuel with air, the oxygen in the air, makes a heat source. It makes fire, pretty much. And you use that heat, that energy, to do something used to put it into a system here. And this circle here means a system. Well, what's a system? Well, it could be anything, but in the case of an engine, that system is a piston and a cylinder going up and down. There are other things that still qualify as a system, and that's the, the utility of this. Because this is an abstraction, you can think about a lot of different kinds of engines using this exact same idea. That's the power. That's the power of abstraction. That's why thinking about engines rather than the hardware, but as a Carnot heat engine, is a good idea. It lets us think about things in important ways without getting all caught up in the details. So anyway, you've got heat going in, you're making you, uh, heat into your system, work comes out, and some heat is rejected. Well, let's think about what that means for an engine, you know, a gas engine, internal combustion engine. Well, you burn fuel, okay, whatever kind of fuel, and the dragster is nitromethane. Most of the time, though, it's either uh, gasoline or uh, diesel fuel, and you make heat. Well, what's that heat do? Well, it pushes a piston down that's connected to a, drag, a crankshaft, that's connected to a transmission, that's connected to the wheels. All right? So when it pushes the piston down, you're doing work. Okay? That's the whole idea. That's what we want an engine to do. Engines are useful because they, they, they do work in ways that we can harness. Okay? So that's good. So for the dragster, it means I go from zero to just stupid fast in 1,000 feet, 305 meters. Now, does all of the heat in the engine go down there? Nope, not even close. Some of it is thrown away. Some of it goes back out into the environment. And in a lot of car engines, uh, gasoline engines, this number is about two-thirds of that number, more or less. Okay, so think about it. Heat goes in, does some work. Well, why are we throwing heat away? Why don't we just keep it all? Well, let's see. A lot of it goes out the exhaust pipe. Exhaust gases out in cars are very hot. That's energy. Goes out the exhaust pipe. Okay, so it's wasted. And also, we can't run engines as hot as we'd like to. Okay, if the the typical engine will have an aluminum block and aluminum pistons, maybe sometimes it'll have a cast iron cylinder inside for mechanical reasons. But aluminum can only get about so hot before it melts, and it's easy to make an engine where the combustion chamber gets so hot it melts the surrounding structure. Well, that's bad. So what we do is the engine block has a cooling jacket around it. It's, it's, it's filled with a, with a working fluid. It's a, 
uh, antifreeze. It's ethylene glycol in water most of the time, pretty much. And that keeps the engine from getting too hot. Okay, And that excess heat goes out through the radiator. Well, wait a minute. That means we're trying to make the engine hot at the same time we're trying to make it cold. Well, make up your mind. Well, sorry, that's how it is. There's been work done on high temperature materials for engines like uh, ceramics, ceramic piston crowns, ceramic heads, things like that, because those could be much, much hotter. You don't have to cool them as much, so that number gets to be lower. Well, if you want to make an engine more efficient, it's hard to look at an engine and know what to do, but if you look at a uh, diagram like this, it's, it, it's much clearer. This is the power of this kind of abstraction, right? I want that to be as big as I can, I want that to be as small as I can, so that can be as big as it can be. Well, how do I make that small? Well, make sure the exhaust isn't hot. Take the heat out of it. Well, how do you do that? Well, there's lots of things people have tried. One of them is called a turbo compound engine, where you run the exhaust gas through a turbine, spin the turbine, and have the turbine connected to the drive shaft so the exhaust gas actually does mechanical work on its way out. Well, you're extracting energy from the exhaust gas. You're removing some of its heat. Okay, another thing that's much more common is a turbocharger. The exhaust gas spins a little turbine that pumps air into the engine at higher pressure than atmospheric pressure. That makes, that's using the exhaust gas to do useful work. All right, another thing you could possibly do, another one, is just run the engine hotter, develop materials so that you don't have to cool it. You can just run it as hot as you want. Right? So, without going too much farther here, that's a Carnot heat engine. This is, the, this is this idea that you're introduced to in thermodynamics pretty quick, pretty soon. And this is the diagram. It's very simple. And there was why this abstract idea is so useful. It lets you move past the details of how an engine works and think more about the way energy flows through one. So there you go. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.